Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus chapter 3, we're going to get into the peace offering. Three, chapter 3 offering. Now this peace offering is the finished work of Jesus Christ in the believer's peace. Is Christ, God, and the sinner meet in peace. God is appropriation and the sinner reconciled both alike satisfied by what Christ has done. The peace offering, seeing Christ. And if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering, so we've done burnt offering. We looked at that, and you can compare the two when we get to that. Because they're almost, but they're not completely. We've done the meat offering, now the peace offering. If it be if he offered of the herd, would it be a male or female? Okay, the burnt offering was a male. Here it could be either or. He shall offer it without blemish. No marks before the Lord, Jehovah. He shall lay his hand upon the head of the offering. He brings that animal and he, the person that brought it, bring the offering. He puts his hand on the head and kill it. It's your offering. You can't offer to God for anybody else. You've got to lay your sin. You've got to give to God of yourself. It's not. You can't do government spending for God's account. You can't spend any other anybody else's stuff. And kill it at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Again, here's the tabernacle. There's that, that the veil, the gate. Everybody's standing in line. you got the brazen altar. And at that point, the brazen altar where you tie the animal, that's where you're going to kill the animal. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. Blood is sprinkled. Now, there are other places where water is sprinkled, but that's not, that's Jewish with the contents. So the animal's killed. It's slaughtered, it's blood sprinkled upon the brazen altar. Imagine what that thing looked like. He shall offer the sacrifice of the peace offerings, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Jesus Christ went into hell and deposited our sins. It's an offering made by fire. There are people out there who say, well, Christ didn't go to hell. Christ wouldn't go to hell. Now, notice what you need here for the peace offering. You need blood and you need fire. If you're, now, I say a lot about Jesus being God and God being G Jesus. Okay? There are people out there that say Jesus is not God. If that's the Jesus you believe in, you're going to hell. Now, if your Jesus did not go to hell, you're not saved. Where will your sins go? At Calvary. Yeah, but when Christ became the sins on the cross, what happened to him? He deposited them in hell. All right, so he shall offer the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The fat that covereth the inward. Here's the fat again. And all the fat that's on the inwards. God requires fat. 
There's a regulation in the law. Jews could not eat fat. That belonged on the grill to God. And the two kidneys. And the fat that's on them. Which is by the flanks. And that's from the ribs to the hip. The meat. And the call. That's the appendage or the membranes of the liver and with the kidneys. Now, the, the liver, it filters the blood and makes urine. The kidneys, it makes protein for blood to clot. And it works on old and damaged blood cells. What do I want you to see in this, this verse here? The liver and the kidneys work and do the blood. We're already talking about the blood. You've got two organs in the body that help and strengthen the blood. It's all about the blood. It's not the lungs. It's not breathing. It's not spirit. It's the blood. Lay them things down. And Aaron's son shall burn it on the altar upon the burnt sacrifice, which is upon the wood that is on the fire. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. A burnt sacrifice, burning, fire. Hell. That brazen altar pictures hell. Okay, now we're going to get with the flocks. And if his offering for a sacrifice of the peace offerings unto the Lord be of the flock, male or female, again, you, it's either or, he shall offer it without blemish. Okay? Why male or female? You going to tell me females can't get peace with God? Only males? A man or a woman can come to Jesus and get peace. By God through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. There's no other way to fix my blood, God. There's no other way to strain my blood. In my blood is sin. The kidney and the liver. And there's only one peace through God, through male or female. That is, is to Jesus Christ. He shall offer it without blemish. Again, no more. I, I got blemishes. I got freckles. I got scars. I got sin. Why all these animals? And I'm probably going to say this all through the book of Leviticus. And maybe Deuteronomy. That lamb that we're reading about now. That bullock we just read about. The goats we've read about so far in Leviticus. That is to show that you can do nothing to yourself for salvation. Something else had to die in your place. The lamb we're going to read about right now. What could that lamb done? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. What could you done? What could you bring to God? Nothing. As far as blood. Alright. I'll take my child and I'll slay my, my child. No. That's not what it says. That's not what it's going to say. Matter of fact. The law says you're not to slay your children. Bring a lamb. Bring an animal. And then we see. Behold the lamb of God. Which take away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ died for us. Those animals that say, hey, we can't do nothing. They had to do it for me. Jesus Christ did it for me. There's nothing I can do. And he shall offer a lamb for his offering. Then shall he offer it before the Lord at the tabernacle. Nowhere else. He shall lay his hand upon the head of the offering again and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron's sons, the priests, shall sprinkle the blood thereof round about the altar. Now, I've heard this conception. A lot of people think down south that my mama, you know, my great-grandma and all that, they can't do nothing for your salvation. You've got to kill it yourself. You've got to recognize the fact is that Jesus Christ died on that cross for you. Oh, that's fine. He did it for others and all that. For you. And when he died for you. Then there can be a sacrifice. He shall offer of the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire 
unto the Lord. The fat thereof. And the whole rump. That's the best part. It shall take off hard by the backbone. And the fat that covereth the inwards. And all the fat that's upon the inwards. And the two kidneys. And the fat that's on them. Which is by the frank flanks. And the call above the liver. And the kidneys. It shall, it shall he take away. And that would be the priest. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now, you got the breast and you got the shoulders. The best part. It is given to the priests that they may eat. That they can have fellowship with God. That God is providing for the priests. By these sacrifices, a way to live. I'm a priest. And by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, I get the best. And not eating Jesus, but I get the best that Jesus has to offer as his bride, as a son of God. And verse 12, and if his offering be of a goat. We're still on flocks, but now we're looking at goats. This chapter divides in... A herd, flock, lamb, or goat. When we did the meat offering, I mean not the meat, when we did the burnt offering, it was the herd, it was the flock, and there's fowls. There's no bird here. You don't give a bird. You don't bring a pigeon or a turtle dove. He shall offer it before the Lord. He shall lay his hand upon the head of it. So we And kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. So we got three animals. We got it down fact. You put your hand on it. You slay it. And it's going to be blood. And it's going to be fire. Now this is messy. Who's going to want you know, a liberal or anything like that. Or some squinish person. What do you think he's going to want to do. You take somebody who loves animals. You think he's going to be willing to do what we're doing right here. Oh, we've got to save the cows, we've got to save the, the rams, we've got to save the, the... No. If you did, you weren't cleansed by God. You had no peace offering. You know what God says in the Old Testament as far as animals? You better sacrifice them. Don't save them. If you save them, I'm not pleased. You're not right with God. And the sons of Aaron, the priest, shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar round about. All around it. He shall offer thereof his offering. Even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The fat that covers the inwards. And all the fat that is, in, is upon the inwards. And the two kidneys. And the fat that's upon them, which is by the flanks. And the call above the liver. With the kidneys, it shall... It shall he take away. So you're going to cut this animal apart and you're going to remove and throw on the fire. I remember Jesus being speared with, with his, in his blood and water coming out. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savior. There's a sweet savior. All the fat is the Lord's. And again, I said, we'll read later on. The Jews were not to eat the fat. That's God's. We already read last night, salt. You better have salt. It shall be a perpetual, continual, always. In the millennium and in eternity. It shall be a perpetual statue for your generation throughout all your dwellings, where you live. Now and in the land. Oh, here it is. That you eat neither fat nor blood. So let me ask you a question. When we leave off with that verse there. And you say that what you're doing in your church service is the literal blood of Jesus Christ. And you call him the Lamb of God. And they do. Verse 6. The Catholics call him the Lamb of God. And say, that is 
the Lutherans say that is the literal blood of Jesus. And when you come to the end of verse 17, that ye eat neither fat nor blood. Now, how you get around that one? If you literally eat in blood, God says not to. All right, priests. I'm a priest. They claim to be priests. Let's say lamb. We'll take lamb. The guy brings his lamb. He kills it. They cut it open. They take the kidneys. They take the caul. They take the fat. They take the liver. They take the rump. They take the, the, the flanks. And they do what they're supposed to. What is left over belongs to the priest. Any fat that's left over, any fat that's there is not yours. Don't you eat it. Burn it. Any blood that's left over, ain't yours. And that blood forbidding, you find it before the law in Genesis. You find it in the law of Leviticus. And you'll find it in the Acts of the Apostles when they're, okay, we got these Gentile churches. What, kind, what can we tell them to do besides you don't keep the law? Things strangle for blood. Don't drink the blood. Is the fact is that the Bible says no blood eating. It says eating. And then you go ahead and do that as far as your service, you're violating God. That's wrong. 